Good evening, Harrisville Baptist Church family. We hope you've had a wonderful Sunday. I'll tell you what, at our house, it's been just a very relaxing day, and I hope it's been the same thing for you. Uh, not a whole lot going on this afternoon, thankfully. Uh, just a, a day to kind of rest and uh, and to be together and to uh, to enjoy some beautiful weather outside and and just having a good time being together as a family. Uh, we enjoy being with you this morning in worship, and as we do each and every week. And uh, we're inching ever closer, ever closer to the time when we can be back together in person again. In fact, we're monitoring very closely uh, the reopenings and uh, the things that are being told to us by our, our state government uh, to be sure that we are doing exactly what we need to be doing to first and foremost protect each and, each and every one of you and our families, um, but also to be in compliance with, uh, with what our government has asked us to do. Uh, in just a moment when we open in prayer, we want to just ask you to, to pray specifically for our government leaders uh, at the federal level and certainly at the state level and here locally, uh, that they would be making wise decisions. Um, and not, not that we would judge them as wise, but they would be wise in the eyes of the Lord. That they would be doing exactly what they need to do to help us come back to, uh, to deal with all the things that, that we need to financially and economically, but also to deal with safety. Uh, we're praying for them, and uh, if you're a part of government right now and you may be watching a little bit of this, we're praying for you. So uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer together, and let's take some time to pray for our governmental leaders. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much, Lord, for bringing us here together over the internet, over technology this evening. Lord God, we thank you that you are alive, that you are, are, are well, that you are great, and you are God above all things. And God, we worship you and praise you with our lives because you deserve it and so much more. Lord God, as we look to your word this evening, Father, help us to, to, to feast on it, to, to be excited about what you're going to teach us, to, to find our sustenance and our teaching that, that comes directly from you in each and everything that we read and that we hear and that we study. Father, let the words that are said be words from your heart, not from mine, uh, but Father, rather just for what you would have each and every one of us to hear. Lord God, as we come together this evening, we are uh, so thankful, Father, for our governmental leaders. God, we often complain about them. We often think we know better than them. We often disagree with them about so many things. But God, we're thankful, Father, that you have placed us uh, in, in a country such as ours, Father, with leadership such as ours. Even when we disagree, we still pray for those who are making these decisions. God, I pray for each and every level of our government, from the ones who are actually on the microphone in the, the lead offices to the ones who advise them and who serve them. Lord God, for each and every one of them, would you bring wisdom Father, that you would guide us through uh, this pandemic and all of the effects and impact that it has. Lord God, would you help them to make wise decisions on how to come back, on when to come back, and, 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 and in what phases to come back. Lord God, we pray for each and every one of us that you would give us patience, Father, as, as this social distancing and quarantining and, and lockdown and all these things, these, these policies that we've become painfully used to God, as they continue to wear on us more and more over these weeks, God, help us to, to live patiently. Help us to live obediently to you first. And Father, therefore, from you, um, helping us to be obedient to our government as well. Lord God, we do lift up each and every one of them. Father, we lift up their salvation. God, if they're not child, a child of, of yours through putting their faith in Jesus Christ and finding salvation through your grace, then Lord, would you draw them to that? Father, we don't want to argue with them about it. Father, we don't need to argue with them about it. I pray, Lord, you just work in their hearts. And Father, for those that are, I pray that you would strengthen them and encourage them as they fight battles each and every day against their flesh and against the flesh of others at the highest levels of government. Lord God, be with our governmental leaders. Help them lead us well. Father, help us follow well. Lord, as we look to your word, Father, again, feed us, teach us, grow us. God, show us something about you that helps us know something about us so that we can better worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, guys, we, uh, we're, we're not too far, just a few weeks from actually wrapping up a, a brief tour through the Psalms. Now, when I say a brief tour, it, it's taken us about a year of Sunday nights, and we haven't hit every Psalm. There's, uh, there's 150 of them, so uh, there's, there's a lot to be covered, and we haven't covered each and every one of them. Uh, we've covered about a third of them or so, or we will by the time we get finished here in the next few weeks. Uh, but there's so many Psalms that as we read through them, we, we, we 
recognize. Maybe we didn't know exactly what the verse reference was on a particular verse, and, and maybe as we've read them and studied them on Sunday nights, we, thought, we found out, oh, that's, that's where that came from. Oh, that's, or we were reminded that, oh, that's right. I forgot that that was in that particular psalm or in that particular context or uh, it, it was said in that particular way. And I think that this evening will be another one of those psalms that does the same thing. So we're looking at Psalm 127, uh, and we'll read all five verses. I know that's a lot shorter than some of the psalms we've read here lately. So uh, Psalm 127, beginning with verse 1, and we read, Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat for he grants sleep to those he loves. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. Now, some things we recognize and, and learn about Psalm 127 is uh, so many of the Psalms are of David. This is actually a Psalm of Solomon. And of course, we know Solomon as, as David's son who, who, is, who uh, assumes the throne um, and is, is asked by God to, uh, to ask for anything. He, he's granted uh, the option to, uh, to, to ask for anything he wants. And he chooses to ask for wisdom to rule well instead of riches or more power or anything like that. He asked God for wisdom to rule well. And it was a good answer, uh, not just because it was the right answer. That was the first reason. Uh, that was exactly what God would have him to do. And he did that knowingly or not. That's, that's how it worked out. Uh, but also because God then said, I will give you wisdom that the likes of which no man has ever had nor will ever will have. Uh, and I'll add all these other things to you as well. And so what we see here is that Solomon is given wisdom. So anytime Solomon uh, is given credit for a psalm, uh, and then of course the whole book of Proverbs, uh, we look at his writings that God inspired him to put down or have put down for him. Uh, they're, they're sources of wisdom. Of course, all of God's word is, is a source of wisdom for us. Uh, it comes from him. He shares his wisdom with us through it, and he shares what true wisdom is, and that's how we learn what wisdom is, is from his word. But particularly with Solomon, uh, the idea of wisdom is, is just about synonymous with him. Uh, although Solomon didn't always stay very faithful to the Lord and, and caused a lot of problems when he didn't, um, at this point, we, we understand that he is, he's writing truth because, again, the Holy Spirit has inspired him uh, to, to put down what, he has, uh, what we have here that we've just read in Psalm 127. But this is a Psalm of Solomon, and, and it teaches us about a lot of things. Now, remember that Solomon uh, is known, of course, for wisdom, but he's known for wisdom in the context of being a king. And so there's a king and king kingdom motif that flows throughout these five verses of Psalm 127. And, uh, and, and it's so, as we read through it, um, it's, it's a very correct and, and proper interpretation to interpret this uh, not just simply as a local family, but as a kingdom, as, a, as the king being the head of it, um, uh, the father of a family, so to speak, as if his subjects would be children. Uh, it's, 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 it's right for us to interpret it that way. That doesn't mean that in what we'll read here about a family or a house, that it doesn't also apply to my nuclear family, your nuclear family, our church family, uh, but there is this kingdom motif, this, this royal motif that comes through here. And some of the illusions here, some of the illustrations are uh, royal in nature. They're, 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 they have to do with a king and his kingdom. And so as we take a look at verse one, it says, unless the Lord builds a house, the builders labor in vain. Now, this is a, a, an amazing uh, verse that, that many of us, if we've ever built a house or been part of building a church building, uh, somewhere along the process, we, 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 we either pray this, this verse from the Psalms or we, we write it on the concrete before the flooring goes down or we write it on the walls before the paint goes up. Uh, it's, it's, it's something that, that we, we have looked to and is very familiar to so many of us that unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. In other words, uh, this is God's house. This is what he's doing, what he's building. And we're giving him credit and we're giving him power in it as if he needs us to give him that. But he wants us to. He wants us to give him dominion uh, over our house. Now, we use this in construction a lot when we're trying to, to, to pray blessings upon a building and the, the things that it'll be used to do in ministry. Um, but, but it may not just be uh, the idea of just a physical 
house. In fact, it's not just the idea of a physical house. Uh, this is not talking about God being, um, you know, the home makeover expert or, or, or the, the, the custom house builder for us. That's not the point here because of the context of the rest of the psalm. Uh, what we see though here is, is the first little description is that God is a builder. He, he's, he's one who builds. Well, what does God build? What's he building here? Well, it says, unless he builds the house. Well, this term house um, in, its, in its translation could also be looked at as family, could also be looked at as group of people that are connected uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a significant way. Kingdom could also be looked at as a term for a dynasty or, or for a, a, a reign or of a monarchy. And so we have this understanding here that unless the Lord builds the family, the group of people, the kingdom, unless he's the one that builds it, uh, then the builders labor in vain. God builds what is real and what is true. God doesn't build anything that he makes mistakes in. God doesn't build anything that he struggles with or that he, uh, that, that he messes up in. There's no, no such thing as that for God. Uh, everything he does is good. And so the idea here is that we let the one who builds things that are good be the builder. God is a builder. And what does he build? He builds spiritual reality. He builds that for you and me. Think about it for just a second. If, if you've put your faith in Christ at some point in the past, then right now you're in the process of following him and being built day by day. Well, we all know that the building process, if we've ever gone through the building of a, of a house or another building, maybe for your business or even here at our church or somewhere else, uh, you know that it's not always easy and it's not always, t it's not always uh, a fun situation. Building is a, is a, a very laborious, obviously, uh, and, and sometimes tormenting process. Sometimes to build, you have to be torn down. Sometimes you have to, to, uh, to, to grow through some very tough parts of the building. And that's what we're doing. Uh, we're, we're, we're working through the 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 person in, to which God is building us to be. We're working through the tough parts of the build and God is building us spiritually. And as he does that, he is also dealing with our emotions. He's dealing with our physical body. He's dealing with our mental capacities and the way we think. And he's dealing with our actions. Um, he's, he's working in all of our being, but he is building as a part of what is true spiritual reality. Uh, that he is king, that he is Lord of lords, that he is the king of the world, uh, and, and that he is, he's on top of this and that, that what we do needs to line up with him. He's building that within us. Now, as we look back to the Psalm, verse one, Psalm 127, verse 1, unless the Lord builds the house, well, let's, let's take this in a few different contexts. If you're a king and, this, and you are interpreting this um, in the way of, of, of building your kingdom, well, kings are all about protecting their kingdom, but also enlarging their kingdom. Uh, you show me a king throughout history who was content to just keep what he had, and I'll show you a king who would soon be overcome because the name of the game when it was kingship was to expand your territory. It was to grow the, 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 the reign that you had and the power that you had and the possessions that you had. And that's what kings did. Now, some kings did it better than others, and some kings did it in a more uh, gentle and loving way than others. Some were absolute tyrants and still have been and still will be. Uh, but, but unless the, the Lord builds this kingdom, then the builders build in vain. They labor in vain. And what he's saying here is, is that we've got this, this group of people. That in this illustration, we've got this kingdom. And if we do everything we can to make it bigger, better, stronger, we're going to work in vain if we're not submitting it to the Lord. If we're not letting him be the one who builds the kingdom, then we as kings are going to be very, very poor and lacking. Well, what about if we look at it as our church? Well, our church is a family of faith. It's a significant, uh, significantly connected group of people connected through Christ. And if, if we try to do everything me and you can do uh, to, to grow our church by getting more people involved and reaching out to more people and ministering to more people, if it's just simply something we're doing, well, it's something we're doing in vain. And it's something that won't last and won't be eternal. But if the Lord is the one who is building our church, if he is the one who is motivating us to do outreach, motivating us to do evangelism, motivating us to do ministry, if he's the one who's leading us, well, then that's where we should be at. That's what we should be about. He is calling us to be that way. We should be letting him build it and we are his workers as opposed to he's the one who just resources us uh, doing the things we want to do. What about if we use this, this interpretation here of the idea of a family, the house, uh, the physical home, the, 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 the place where family meets. 
What if he's building that family both physically and spiritually as well as emotionally and in every way? Well, here again, I can try to make my family great and maybe I can pull it off for a little while, but I'll never pull it off eternally on my own. I'll never be able to pull it off eternally even if, I, if my family's seemingly perfect in every way. Only God can build my family into a, fi a family that follows Christ obediently. And so whether we're looking at a king building his kingdom, whether we're looking at us as people in his church building the, our local body of believers, whether we're looking at our, us how we are trying to see our families be built, we have to let God be the builder, building in spiritual reality and showing us what really is and who we should really be and who we can be if we'll put our faith in him. We have to let him be the builder. Well, verse two steps into God also playing an additional role. And of course, God plays many roles uh, as being God. He, he plays them all and plays them all perfectly. But the role that verse two specifically mentions in connection with being the builder is the idea of protector. In verse two, we read, in vain you rise early. Uh, excuse me, second, not verse two. I skipped over, I skipped over my, my reference here. Uh, the second half of verse one. Uh, Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. Now, this is the idea of God as protector. God is watching over us. We, we talked about last week how he doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. He doesn't have need for that. Uh, and so he's always watching over us. Uh, we talked about uh, even this morning how God protects his people. And, and that's exactly what's going on right here in the second half of verse 1. Uh, he watches over the city. Well, now again, think about it in a royal context. Um, if you were a king of a of a of a, a medieval city, especially in the medieval times or in the ancient Near Eastern times, you would you would have to keep watch. There would never be a time when your town, your city, your kingdom, your your castle, your area was not guarded. It had to be guarded against someone trying to come and take it from you, or trying to take it over, or trying to threaten your life and the life of your kingdom. Uh, and so there would constantly be watch. And when people were particularly vulnerable, as we talked about here in the last few days, uh, it would be at night because guards would fall asleep and uh, the cover of darkness was there and the element of surprise was there. And so the idea of being watched over was important for these kings. It's also important for our church. It's also important for our families. And again, I think these interpretations are, are, are perfectly valid here. Because first off, keeping with the royal motif, uh, any king who is trusting in just the strength of his military to watch over his city and not trusting in the Lord to protect him and therefore following the Lord in the way he takes and leads his kingdom, um, well, well, they're going to be they're going to be incomplete. They're going to be less than they could be. They're they're not going to be doing with the resources and then the kingdom's uh, assets that they've been given by the Lord. They're not going to be doing well with them compared to what they could be doing because or if if and when they are following the Lord and letting Him watch over. But if they are in His purpose and God's watching over and protecting Him, uh, protecting that King, protecting that kingdom, well, then that's much better protection. Um, if He's if it's just His military watching over it, well. They're watching it in vain. They stay and watch in vain because uh, something's going to come that's going to overwhelm them. But where the Lord protects us and where the Lord protects that kingdom, nothing will overcome it. Nothing will, over will overwhelm it. And so the idea of God being the protector here also applies to our church. How can he protect us in every part of our church and our ministry and our fellowship here at Harrisville Baptist Church and any other local body of believers? Well, we have to let him protect us. We can't do it only in our own wisdom. We have to seek his guidance. We have to seek his will in how we would go about what we do and, and follow him in those things obediently to be able to live and minister and, and grow in his protection. Same thing for our families. You and I, as adults, especially uh, those of us who, are the, who, who work for a wage, we do a lot of things, a lot of things, and spend a lot of time and a lot of effort and, a lot, and take on a lot of stress to be able to pay the bills, to be able to do the things that we need to do, and to be able to do some of the things that we want to do. We, we try to do it to protect our family, to give them security financially so that we feel like we can kind of have the ability to, to, to live a little in some ways when we try to do this and try to do that, give our children good things and things like that, and, and, and provide protection for them to help them grow in their future. And, and, and we do that all the time. But if we do that just based out of our own strength, if we're trying to protect our family financially or any other way on our own, we're going to fail. We're standing watch in vain. It's the Lord who protects us. It's the Lord who is builder and protector. 
In fact, we get a little bit more of this idea of that provider that works in vain now in verse two. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. Here God is provider. Here God is the one who's bringing it. We do, we, do, we go into a lot of effort. Let's go back to the family example. Uh, breadwinners out there, those of you who are providing the, the money or, or, or working to provide the money and the financial security for your family, man, you get up early? Well, most of us do, <laughs> not me sometimes. You know that about me, that's okay. Uh, but, but you work long hours. Why don't we just say it that way? That's probably better. You work long hours. He says you get up early and you stay up late. Why? to try to do well to provide, to toil for food to eat. And we know that that goes farther than just the things that we put in our mouths, but the things that we, that we do, the things that keep us going, the things that we enjoy, the things that we are blessed with, uh, whether it be uh, hobbies or whether it be um, you know, possessions, things like that. We work and we work and we work and we go and we go and we go and we do and we do and we do, trying to get these things. But it says, look, <laughs> God is the one who provides. He's the one who grants sleep to those he loves. He provides when we can't provide for ourselves. He provides better than we could ever provide for ourselves. God is not only building, he's not only protecting, he's providing. And, and in his provision, he, 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 he works this provision and his providence out of his protection. The person who is trusting the Lord can sleep easy. Why? Because they know he is protecting them and they know he's providing for them. As we move on to verses three, four, and five, it, it shifts a little bit. It still keeps in the kingdom uh, motif, and it still definitely applies if you think about children being subjects of the king, but it speaks a little bit more close to home, literally, uh, for us when it comes to us being parents. We read in verse three, children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. I think there's a lot of new homeschool teachers out there who are, are wondering about this verse. This is one they're wrestling with right now. Uh, they're, they're thanking God that maybe the school year is coming to an end and they, they don't have to do common core math anymore. Uh, as we get to Mother's Day, this is a great verse to, uh, to, to, to be able to say that not only for the fathers that are directly referenced here, uh, but, but also to mothers, to parents that children are a great reward. And uh, moms, we, we love you and we thank you. We'll be celebrating you next week as, as well as we celebrate you every day. Uh, but we'll be especially celebrating you next Sunday on Mother's Day and, and looking forward to that. But uh, I hope that you believe that your children each and every day are a heritage from the Lord and a great reward from him. Um, here God is the giver of good things. And certainly the best thing that he can give us outside of our own salvation is a child. Uh, that we have been entrusted by him to grow and to lead and to raise. I would say that we refer, refer back to verse one uh, and the idea of building a child, raising a child. If we do that on our own, well, it's gonna be in vain. But if we let the Lord guide us and let the Lord raise our children through us as we follow him, well, now we'll be looking at, at children who grow to be godly and valuable uh, people in his kingdom. He says, children are a heritage from the Lord. How does what you do last? Uh, you know, in, in, in doing, uh, you know, I guess this is a year, I don't know, 26 or so in, in, in ministry for us. And, and, uh, and, and I think back to some of the, the great things that we work so hard to do, it, it, the things that still have any lasting uh, value are the ones that had an impact beyond us. I can tell you a lot of stuff I ran around doing in ministry and still do uh, that, that sadly, you know, years later, I won't be able to really remember because they weren't very significant. But the things that are, uh, the things that I would consider part of ministry heritage that God has blessed us with are those things where people have been uh, truly affected by what's been going on. Ministries where people have come to Christ or grown as disciples or served in such a way that changed their life, that transformed them, that, that saw them just, uh, just flourish in the Lord. And, uh, and, and so this idea of children being a heritage is how our heritage, our legacy is going to be passed down and remembered. Our children, our children are, are, are likely going to be here after we are. And it's very important that we understand that, hey, what we do in regards to them and how we think of them and how we regard, how we, how we 
are responsible for them and what we do in that responsibility uh, is going to be our heritage. It's going to be the thing that, that, that we hand down. It's going to be the thing that we're remembered for, our legacy, if you will. And our children are, an, uh, they are an absolute and outright reward from him. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't deserve to have two girls like the ones I've got. I don't deserve it. I, there's nothing I've done to earn it. There's nothing that, um, it's a reward that God gave even though I didn't deserve it. It's a grace. It's a, it's a absolute grace from the Lord. And I'm so thankful for the two of them, just as you are for your children. And, and this is not about just having good kids, but having the opportunity to, to, to love someone as a father or as a mother. They have, having the opportunity to, to be responsible for someone as, as an, an under-shepherd in our own home. Uh, under God as our great shepherd. Our children are a reward. Our children are our heritage. They go on, or Solomon goes on to describe them in verse four. He says, like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Think about it for just a second. Archers would have been one of the most vital and powerful parts of any army of this time and, and over lots of time before modern warfare. Uh, why? Because they, they allowed the ability for long-range attack long before airplanes and drones and tanks and things like that. Archers have been around for a very, very, very long time, and, and they were a major part of great victories and a major part, for some, of great defeats. And so this, this allusion to archers and, and bows and especially arrows is, is literally talking about the resources that we have uh, to, to grow, the resources we have to do well. Um, remember, looking at a kingdom, he would have, a king would have some sort of military force for his protection if he was going to be around very long. And, uh, and in there, he would likely, during this time, and, and lots of others, have archers. And those archers, if they didn't have arrows, they were sunk. They, they, you, know, you, you can't throw a bow at anybody and really affect anybody uh, in, in, in towards victory. But you can certainly, if you have a good bow and you have lots of arrows, then you have an opportunity to, to be victorious. And, uh, and so he says, like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. We've got to have the ammunition. Now, that doesn't mean we're, we're firing off our kids, right? That's not what we're talking about here. What we're saying, though, is it's like arrows. It's, it's, it's that abundance of resource. It's that abundance of possibility towards victory. And, uh, and, and so like an arrow in the hand of a warrior, children uh, are that way when they're born to one in one's youth. Now, we don't need to talk about what youth is, right? We're not talking about someone born to someone of an extremely young age. We're talking about in the childbearing years. So we'll just leave it at that. Uh, but the idea here is that children born to us during that time are, are great opportunity towards victory. They're, they're a great opportunity for us to, to follow the Lord in raising them well uh, and then sit back and celebrate the victory that God brings in their lives. Um, he, he goes on to say in verse five, blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them, full of arrows. You don't put kids in the quiver, right? Uh, but we do talk about having a, our quiver being full, you know, when somebody has, uh, you know, their third, fourth, fifth child, uh, we, you know, that, that phrase sometimes gets passed around, especially in the South in biblical terms, having a full quiver. Uh, and that's this idea that uh, the man whose quiver is full of children, who's full of these arrows, if you will, uh, they won't be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. Now remember, this is a royal court. This is not a, a court of law so much as it is an audience with the people. Um, and there's certain references back to, uh, to even to the book of Genesis in this. We don't have time to go into all of that this evening. Uh, but suffice it to say that, that the one who has these children, the one that has these great rewards, um, is, is honored because of them. And the idea here in just a, just a few days, in a week, when we, when we honor our mothers on Mother's Day, we're honoring them because of what they're doing as moms uh, in the lives of their children. And, and, and those who have raised many children, uh, man, they, they deserve special honor. Uh, some of you that just have one or two like us, uh, man, uh, we, we might deserve some honor for the ones we're raising just because there's only a few of them and we don't know if we can handle more than that. Uh, but certainly the ones who have, who have many uh, are, are looked at with special with special honor and special uh, recognition. But here, we're again talking about a king who has lots of subjects, or, or for us, people who have lots of people that we can influence. Not simply to be an influencer, like the word is thrown around so much these days of social media, but so that we can truly understand what it means to impact 
someone else so that we can truly understand what our, what, how we disciple people. And we're all discipling people in one way or another. Hopefully we're doing it in the Lord, to the Lord. But we're all discipling people, teaching them and those that are under our influence to go in a certain way. And the more we have, then the more responsibility we have and the more opportunity we have uh, for God to show us and to deliver us victory in our life. And so as we look through these five verses of Psalm 127, we see that God is a builder. We need to let him build. We don't need to try to do it on our own. He's, he's a protector. We need to take his protection, not the protection that we can come to and provide on our own. And he's a provider. We need to let him provide for us. And what does he do? He builds us and he protects us and he provides for us with people to have influence over. For a king, it'd be his subjects. For a church, it's our, our church family. For you and I at home, it's our families that we lead. And so in all of this, we're saying that God is in control. It all comes from him, and anything that's good uh, is, is his not only to give, it's also his to take if he chooses to do it. And it's his to lead us and guide us and command us in how to show our responsibility and to be good stewards of what he's given us. You know, as I, as I think through this, I think about um, some of the things when it comes to parenting. Um, you and I both know that, that, that parents can, can, well, there's no guarantees in parenting. Um, it's not that there's no promises from the Lord, but the Lord also gives us free choice. And so we can be doing everything right, and God's doing exactly what he said. And it only takes one choice from us as parents or our children um, to, uh, to throw things really, really out of whack. There's no guarantees. I mean, you and I both have seen parents who, who as best we can tell, were model parents. I mean, they've done everything, they've, 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 they've done everything spiritually, they've done everything in every way to raise their children right, and, and things, things don't always go well because of choices that are made. Um, sometimes on the kids' part, sometimes on the part of kids around them, uh, or, or people that are around their kids, choices happen and they, and they, they throw astray. On the flip side, there's also no guarantee that terrible parenting leads to terrible children. Uh, how many people do you know? Maybe you're, you're one of them. That uh, the home life wasn't perfect. It may not have been even good. It may not have been even safe. And yet out of it, God produces someone who knows how to rely on him and, and, and raises up great men and women of God uh, out of really bad home lives. So there's, we know there's no guarantees. But I think that what we can pull out of this for our families this evening is this, is that we need to make sure that we commit ourselves and therefore our families to the Lord. We don't need to try to do it all on our own. We don't need to stress and, and, and take away from our health and from our attitudes and from, our, our, uh, from just our joyfulness by trying to do so much out of our own. That doesn't mean we need to coast. It doesn't mean we need to freeload. We definitely need to work and we need to serve and we need to, to be responsible, but we need to have proper balance. We need to make sure that, that we let the Lord do what only the Lord can do and then we do what he calls us to do uh, and, and that we don't try to get those mixed up. That we don't try to uh, say, okay, God, I want you to take care of this, but let me go work a backup plan just in case you don't. That's not really faith. With our families, we need to make sure that we're submitting our families to him in every way and that we're letting him do, again, what only he can do. Uh, that we need to let him build whatever growth is to come that we will celebrate. It needs to come from him because if it doesn't, if it comes from us, then we'll be tempted to take credit for it and that's gonna take it away from the Lord and that's not right. He's the one who deserves it because if it's really good, if it's truly good, it came from him anyway. We have to recognize that. Um, we need to let him protect us. We don't need to find security in so many other things. I mean, look around. A lot of people, a lot of us have had security in so many things that literally with, a, with a, an executive order or an announcement on the news channel or in the newspaper went away. Um, the sadness of all of that uh, it can only be made good by the Lord teaching us and growing us and providing for us and protecting us in it. But here's the thing, our security comes from the Lord. He's our protector. We're not. Our watchmen are not. He is our protector. He's the one who, who serves to protect us. And so we need to make sure we find our protection in him for our families, for our livelihood, for uh, our homes, for our, our possessions, for our sanity, for all the things that we are so, or that we're valuing so highly, we need to make sure that we trust the Lord to protect even more than an insurance company or even more than a strong lock or anything like that, that we're trusting the Lord for his protection. Then also we need to let the Lord provide. We've talked about that very early on with social distancing. 
Um, that, that thought, that verse just continued to, to resonate in, in my ears and in my heart, and he, he still has, and he still uh, does let that, that, ver that verse ring true. The Lord will provide, and he can provide better than I can, but he can, he can give uh, <laughs> way more than I can give and way better things. And so we need to let him provide. And then as we look to those that we have influence over, especially for those of us who have or are raising children, we need to know that they're a blessing. They're not a, they're not a hassle. <laughs> well, sometimes they feel that way, I guess, a little bit. Uh, but they're not a hassle. They're not a punishment. They're not an inconvenience. And we don't need to look at them that way. I joke about them being a hassle, but they're a true blessing. And the opportunities that we have with them are to give them to the Lord in dedicating their lives as their parents to them and dedicate ourselves to raising them in him. And then they're a joy to be able to watch grow. We need to make sure that we're trusting in the Lord to do all that he can do as we, as we do lead them. But we need to know too that he's given us such a great and awesome gift in our children and our children's children and in the other people that we have influence over in our lives. I think that Solomon, in his wisdom, would remind us that, uh, that it's not just all about the moment, <laughs> that, that we see these things born out over time. That's definitely true with our children. In a moment, I, look, especially under the strict you know, house rules where you're in the house together for a long period of time. Oh, I don't know. I can't think of a time. Yeah, I can. Right now, right? Uh, sometimes we, we get a little too much family time. We get a little too much intimacy. We get a little too much closeness, and we need to kind of go to our separate corners and breathe for just a second. Um, but all the time, even though in those moments sometimes we rub each other raw and, and sometimes we, we get on each other's nerves, as we see borne out over seasons and long periods of time, we realize the blessing uh, that is our family, that is our children. Um, you know, as uh, someone who just now this week, uh, I guess it's official, has a senior. <laughs> and it feels like mackenzie has been wanting to be a senior or trying to be a senior for three years. But anyway, we now have a senior in high school. And, and man, I, I look back at, at what seems like in some ways a long time, but has truly been just a very quick time to know how much of a blessing Mackenzie has been to us, um, how much he has protected and provided uh, for us with her and, and her life. And so looking forward to what he's gonna do. Um, Let's celebrate our kids. As we celebrate Mother's Day, we definitely want to give moms all the respect that they deserve from the bottoms of our hearts and all of our thanks. Um, but I guarantee you on Mother's Day, those moms, they're all sitting there, standing there, being there wherever they are, and they're celebrating their kids. God's given them to us. Um, and he's taking care of everything that needs to be taken care of. Uh, let's let him do it. And let's follow him in it. And let's celebrate with him uh, when we see the victory come. Let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you so much, Father, for all that you're doing. God, I thank you for your word that reminds us that you are the one who builds, you are the one who protects, you are the one who provides, you're the one who has given us such great gifts of the opportunity to influence others towards you and for you. Lord God, would you help us to do all these things, to trust you with everything. God, I pray for each and every person out there this evening who's struggling. Maybe they've, uh, they've got broken relationships with their kids Maybe they're, they're, they're finding themselves lacking and trying to provide or build or protect in, in their own areas of influence. Lord God, would you bring grace more and more to their life? Let them realize that you are, are there to forgive them, to love them, to strengthen them, and to, to bring them victory in, in each and every part of their lives. God, would you let each and every one of us trust you for that tonight and always. Father, Lord, we thank you that you provide all of that through Jesus Christ on the cross, risen from the grave and now waiting to come back and get us to take us home for those who put our faith in you. So let us do that, Lord. Let us do everything we do for your glory. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Church family, we love you. And uh, like I said, we're, we're inching ever closer. We're, we're, we're you know, a week closer than the last time we did Bible study like this uh, last Sunday. So we're so excited that that's coming up. I know that there's some new openings of things, some stores that are opening up in, in the near future and things like that. That's coming. Uh, and we're going to be part of that. Trust us, uh, please, and help us 
to, to make sure that we are following God's guidance to keep you safe, to keep each other safe, and to be good stewards and to be good examples within our communities. Because uh, that's what each and every church is trying to do. I know every church is doing it a little different. And uh, just uh, make sure you're praying with us as your leadership here uh, and, and many of you that are part of the leadership here at Harrisville Baptist Church. Pray with us that, that we follow God's will exactly and obediently uh, as we look into the, the coming weeks and, and the, the near future for us as a church. I know this. I can't wait to see you, each and every one of you, as I, as I sit and I, I watch and, and I'm looking at names pop up on Facebook that are tuning in. I, I wish I could see you and shake your hand, give you a hug, and talk to you about what's going on in your life and let you, know, let, let you just share what, what God's doing. Uh, but that time's coming. Lord willing, it's coming to us soon, and we look forward to it. We love you. Reach out to us as we reach out to you and uh, let us know how we can help you during this time. And Lord willing, we look forward to seeing you very soon. God bless you.